Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Pre-Market News and Views by In The Money Stocks. Today is Friday, January 11, 2013. Let's jump right into the usual chart, the S&P 500 E-mini futures. You'll see that the futures are trading this morning. Uh, they are trading higher by one point this morning, so uh, not a big move in this market. Uh, yesterday, the markets did rally towards the end of the day. Trading volume this week has been extremely light, and that usually helps to keep the markets buoyant. But uh, again, futures starting out the day slightly positive. Uh, rarely do we see a Friday that's really down very much. Usually on Friday, the markets are somewhat flat to slightly positive. If they are lower, they're lower just a little bit. They're not down all that much. And we would expect the same today. Look for a flat to slightly positive market by the close. A um, couple of things to go over. There was some economic data released out of Europe today. It looked pretty weak in my opinion. So traders want to be on a little bit of on the cautious side. The data out of Europe is looking a little bit lackluster in my opinion. Also, you're going to have Angela Merkel, um, who's the German Chancellor, and other European leaders. They're going to go to Cyprus to talk about the uh, EU's budget. And they're also going to talk about uh, a bailout for Cyprus, which is, you know, not actually Greece. So, uh, again, you know, there's a lot of problems going on in the European Union. Uh, Spain looks like their rate of contraction on industrial production uh, really picked up and it was down 7.2% so or accelerated up to 7.2%. So again, um, there's just a lot of, uh, of nasty data out this morning. We'll see how the market can digest this all going forward. Another thing I want you to follow today is, is the Asian markets. The Shanghai index really tumbled last night down about 1.8% last night. So a big, big move lower on the Shanghai index. And that um, could be problematic for a lot of the Chinese ADRs, which have been very, very strong as of late. So if the U.S. markets are on the weaker side, you're going to watch for weakness in the Chinese ADRs. Stocks like Baidu could come under pressure. Um, you also could see stocks such as uh, China Mobile could come under pressure. Sina Corp. There's just so many out there. Uh, they've had big, big runs as of late. They all will likely pull back today, especially if the U.S. markets are weak. If the U.S. markets are strong, then they may hold up. But either way, um, all the Chinese ADRs that I'm looking at, at least the big cap ones, they are all overbought or into very, very good resistance levels on the daily chart. So be very careful there. Um, let's take a look at oil and gold today. Um, you do have gold trading down about ten dollars yesterday gold made a nice surge to the upside today giving a lot of it back before the opening bell rings gold is down ten bucks to sixteen hundred and sixty eight dollars an ounce again the, the pattern in gold is very uh... choppy and sloppy there doesn't really, really seem to be any real conviction behind any gold move yet but um, you know it's starting to look interesting especially if the dollar continues to fall then gold will start to look interesting uh, again. But as long as the central bankers in the world are printing money, um, you know, just trade gold for now. But at some point in time, gold will make a move. Let's take a look at the GLD this morning. Uh, you'll see the GLD uh, trading up, but this is mostly from yesterday's move. Uh, nice little pop on GLD. GLD yesterday closed at $161.98. Today it's trading at 162.18. So not really a big move from yesterday's close, although it is a decent little move from this low this morning. And that's all about the dollar. And I'll show you what I mean. Uh, see this little two bar move higher in gold? Now take a look at the US dollar index right here. And you're going to see a two bar move lower. So gold and the dollar are back to the inverse relationship. Um, the stock market should get back to an inverse relationship to gold uh, to to the dollar very shortly as well. But right now, look at that two bar drop on the dollar, and then look at the two bar move up here in the pre market on the GLD. So it's all about the dollar at the moment. Uh, the same case can be made for oil. Uh, if you take a look here at crude this morning, uh, you do have crude trading um, lower by 56 cents. But look at the USO here. <clears throat> two bar move up on the USO. This is just trading inversely to the US dollar index. That's all that is. You can see the dollar plunging a little bit today and it was really s just slaughtered yesterday. But the dollar coming down again today and look at two bars and look how the USO which is a good proxy for light sweet crude 
Look how that caught a bid for two bars. So, again, that's what it all comes down to, um, an inverse move to the dollar. People want to know why the gasoline prices are starting to go up or why oil is trading at $94 a barrel simply because your dollar is weaker. That's all it comes down to. has nothing to do with Iran or anything like that at the moment. Uh, it just has to do with a weaker dollar. And, again, they want asset prices up. That's what the central bankers want. So, uh, you know, you have to pay the price somewhere. And it comes in a, uh, a form of higher, higher oil prices. Okay, let's take a look at some stocks in the news today because we do have a few out here. I'm going to start with some some slower ones. AXP um, announced they're going to lay off 5,400 people, I believe. American Express. Um, the stock isn't doing much. I would not be a buyer of the stock up here, even with the layoff, which is normally bullish for stocks. I think the stock has run its course, needs to pull back. It is overbought. I would not be jumping on AXP here. After a uh, consolidation pattern on the on the daily chart, you can look at this one. But as an intraday play, I would not be buying American Express up here, nor would I short it. I'm just going to leave it alone altogether. But, um, again, the stock uh, company announced a massive layoff. And um, right now, I would just leave the stock alone and let it base for a little while or put in another consolidation pattern. But you do not want AXP up at these levels. Uh, another one uh, in the news today is Wells Fargo. This is the first major bank to report. Next week, we'll get a lot more uh, banks reporting earnings. Um, Wells Fargo traded up to this 36 level in the pre-market. It has backed off. I think 36 is a, a huge resistance point for the stock on the daily chart. I would not be a buyer of Wells Fargo. Um, we can't rule out that you know if the markets hold up, it'll get a bid back up to 36. But that would almost be a fading opportunity, in my opinion. I would not be looking to buy Wells Fargo, period, at this stage of the game, up at 36. It looks like you could fade it. Um, but depending on the time of the day, um, it, 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 you want to see that, that get up there early in the day. You don't want to see it late in the day when the volume dies out because most notably volume will probably die out after the first two hours of today's trading day. And once volume gets light, it helps the overall stock indexes remain buoyant. Uh, each and every day we see an uh, early day sell-off and then the market floats right back up to the highs. So again, you don't want to get caught in trying to short something when the volume is very, very light. you got to trade active markets. Um, Cognizant, this is CTSH. This is trading higher on the back of um, some news out of Infosys. Infosys will show you in just a minute. But a great move on Cognizant here. Um, $80, it can be a fade. Okay, so watch 80 bucks on Cognizant. I think there couldn't be a fade there. The stock will also have big resistance up around um, the 83.50 level, $84 area. That is a, a double top high from May 2011. So there will be more resistance there. But right now I'm looking at about 80 bucks. That should be a ton of resistance if it gets there. Aggressive traders can fade it there. Non-aggressive traders, if you want to give it a shot, you can fade it around 83.50 to 84. Unfortunately, I don't have the level to the penny. But that's how it is sometimes when you're dealing with new highs. It's very difficult. But good move in Cognizant trading in sympathy to Infosys. Let's take a look at Infosys. And this is another one catching a huge bid today, trading up at $50.50. I would not be a buyer up here. Aggressive traders um, may be able to get a scalp short on this, but this is holding up very, very well. Um, there can be a fade play on this one around 53.23. Aggressive traders, if they want to try it at the open, if it's still at this level, 50-60 can try it there. But it's not the greatest of levels. The better level would be 53-23 uh, and then 57-95. So I don't even see it getting the 57-95. But hey, you never know. Stranger things have happened. But I do like this 53-26 fade level there. Again, make sure that occurs in the active early part of the day. You don't want to see that in the late part of the day when the volume gets very light because stocks just won't pull back. They'll just go sideways or they'll go higher. Um, that's just the way it works in the market. So again, um, you know, again, when you're looking at scalp levels, and that's all these are, is just scalp levels, uh, you don't want to trade um, when markets get very, very light. Each and every day around um, 12 o'clock or so, you'll see the markets just evaporate to the upside. And that's because there are no sellers out there. Markets really die out. And most day traders just dabble in the active part of the day. Um, they're done by 11 or 12 o'clock. So that's how it kind of works. And um, just giving you the insight there. All right, I'm going to leave it here. I don't think there's really much else. Oh, I do have one more 
forgive me, Rand Gold. Um, this one is trading down about two bucks today. It closed at 96.50. It's trading at 95 now, so down about a dollar fifty, dollar seventy at the moment. But um, keep an eye on this one. This is still a weak name. I don't see any thing to do here, buy or sell. But if it got down to around 86.55, you could get a buy entry there, and also 82.22. So keep that level, keep those uh, levels on your radar just in case the stock does get there. 86.55, and then 82.20. So keep those levels on your radar. Those could be bounce levels for Rand Gold, but Rand Gold coming under a little bit of pressure today, and that's even with the weaker dollar. But you can see here the stock is starting to rally up as the dollar continues to sell off. And I'll just bring that dollar chart up one more time. So again, dollar really just getting plunged right here into the uh, 79.50 area, and yesterday the dollar was just slaughtered. So again, weaker dollar, your goods buy, your money buys you less goods. Um, but your asset prices go up, so I guess that's the good thing. All right, with that said, everybody, have a great trading day, great weekend, and I'll see you back on the charts on Monday. Take care now.